Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, so today what we're going to talk about is some properties of a probability distribution function and uh, how we can work with them. Okay. So first, um, property of a PDF is that all the probabilities have to add up to one, right? A PDF has every single possible outcome that could possibly happen, right? So an example of a probability distribution function you saw was the number of tails and the possibilities were either 0, 1, or 2, okay? I remember this was t means the number of tails when two coins were tossed, all right? So remember, we tossed two coins in class, right? And we talked about the distribution function that distributes, that distributes the probabilities of t okay so that means the probability of having no tails we found out was a quarter one tail we found out was a half and two tails we found out was a quarter again okay so notice that since everything is listed right one of these things has to happen right well that means that all of these things have to add up to one right so all these things have to add up to one because one of these has to happen so I'm 100% sure that one of these outcomes is going to happen, okay? And also, the probabilities have to be between and possibly including 0 and 1, right? We can't have negative probability, and we can't have probability more than 1, okay? So they have to be between 0 and 1, and they all have to add up to 1, okay? So let's try a simple example. Um, so first of all, we want to find the value of b so that the random variable x represents a probability density function. Okay, probability density or probability distribution function, they're similar. We'll talk about the difference in class. But uh, the random variable x, so these are the different outcomes. This is the notation. These are the different values that x can take on. So they're the little x, okay? And the big x is actually what's happening, okay? So this is the probability that x can take on all these different values, okay? So right now the probability that x is 1 is 0.1, the probability that x is 2 is b, we don't know what it is, probability that x is 3 is 0 0.3, and the probability that x is 4 is 2b. I don't know what the value of b is, but I do know that all these things have to add up to 1, okay? So all of them have to add up to 1. Okay, so now if we simplify, we get 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.4 plus 3b is 1, right? Then I take the 0 0.4 over and I get 3b is 1 minus 0 0.4. So we get that 3b is 0 0.6. So we get b is 0 0.2. Okay, so we know the value of b is 0 0.2. Okay, so that means that here I can put 0 0.2, and here I can put 0 0.4, because it's two b's. Okay, then the next thing is I want to determine the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2. Right, well this could be the probability that x is, so this could be the probability, probability that x is greater than or equal to 2. So it could be 2, or it could be 3 or it could be 4, right? So probably the x is 2 is 0 0.2, probably the x is 3 is 0 0.3, probably the x is 4 is 0 0.4. So we add them all up because it's all ors and we get 0 0.9, right? So that's the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2, okay? And if we want to show the chart in a graphical form, all that means is basically what we talked about in class, which is in our x, we're going to list all of our x values. So x could be 1, 2, 3, or 4. And here we list the probabilities. So since we only need to go up to 0 0.4, here's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0.4 and now we're just going to graph it. So 1 0.1 2 is 0 0.2 3 is 0 0.3 
and 4 is 0 0.4. Okay, now it's just a coincidence that this is linear going up, but um, there is the graph of what that looks like. Okay, so those are some basics about um, probability density function. Okay, so um, what I want to show you is now the meaning of expected value. Okay, so expected value means what do we expect to see on average? Okay. So if we toss two coins, how many do you expect to come up heads? Okay, well, we know that it's one. So we call that the expected value of x. And we say that in this case, it's one. Because if I toss two coins, I expect one of them to come up heads. Okay, but let's do this systematically so that we can get an idea of how we do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy our chart that I just wrote over here. Okay, so I'm going to copy that, okay, so there it is, um, and so there's our chart. Um, now, what the expected value is and how we find it out is you have to think basically logically. So the value of this outcome is zero, right? So it's got a value of zero and it's going to happen one quarter of the time. So we're going to multiply those two because I want a quarter of that zero, right? The value of this one is of this number is one, and it's going to happen half the time. Okay, so I want to take half of that one, and I want to take a quarter of that two. Right, so this one's going to happen a quarter of the time. This one's going to happen half the time. This one's going to happen a quarter of the time. And when I add all those up, we get so the expected value of t is going to be zero times a quarter plus one times a half plus two times a quarter, which is one, okay? So in general, the expected value of x is the sum of all of the probabilities of each x times the value of that x, okay? So the probability of the x times the value of the x, okay? and it's the sum of all those. So we did the multiplication, and then we added them all up. So that's how we find the expected value, okay? So this case is a common sense case, right? But you're gonna see other ones that aren't so easy, okay? All right, so let's do this table. So we're given this table, and first we wanna determine the expected value of x, okay? Well, we know that the expected value of x is gonna be the sum uh, remember what we said, the probability of each x times the value, value of that x itself. So that means, so the probability times the value, so times 0, plus the probability times the value, plus the probability times the value. So in this case, we get 1. Point three. So something that has this distribution, we're expecting to see a result of 1.3 every time. So what that means is that if I run this experiment like a million times, the average outcome is going to have the value 1.3. Okay? All right. Now, uh, what I want to show you is this last thing about expected value that you're expected to know. And basically, it shows how we can break down expected values, okay? So the way that we can break it down is, uh, whenever we have adding or subtracting, we can split the expected value. So just like we did with derivatives, integrals, all that stuff, um, we can say that this part is actually the same as the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of 2x plus the expected value of 3. Okay, so now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to call this part number one. I'm going to call this part number two. And I'm going to call this part number three. Okay? So number one, if every x value is three, then the expected outcome is obviously three. Okay, so the expected value of a number is a number itself. Okay? Two, uh, remember when we did derivatives, integrals, and all that stuff? The number in there could always come out. Okay? So if I just double the x value, so here all that's happening is I'm doubling the x values. Right? So all that happens is my expected value gets doubled. Okay? So that is 2 times 1.3, right? Because we figured out 1.3 earlier on in the examples. So that's 2.6. Okay? And the third one is the expected value of x squared. So this one is not so simple. This one we could just double the ex expected value because, remember, the operation that's happening in there is addition, right? And if we double all the parts of an addition, it just means that we've doubled everything. But if I square everything, then I can't just square the total, right? So this is because if I add 2 and 3 and I square it, that's not the same as doing 2 squared plus 3 squared, okay? So this is not working out, okay? So what that means is that in order to calculate um, either the e of x squared, what we're going to have to do is, instead of doing, remember how we did the sum of pxi times xi? Well, now the xi isn't just an xi, it's an xi squared, okay? So this is what we now have to do, okay? So instead of having x times the probability, we have to do x squared times its probability, okay? So that means that in this case, right, let's look back at the chart, 0 and 0 0.3, right? So the probability is 0 0.3, and the outcome is 0 squared plus. And then the probability is 0 0.1, and the outcome is 1. So that means it will be 0 0.1 times 1 squared. And then the last part is 0 0.6 probability, and the outcome is 2. So that will be 0 0.6 times 2 squared. So 0 0.3 times 0 is 0. This is 0 0.1. And this is 0 0.6 times 4, which is 2.4. Right? So this is 2.5. Okay. So therefore, the expected value of x squared minus 2x plus 3 is, remember what we said, the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of 2x plus the expected value of 3, and this is 2.5, and this is 2.6, and that's 3. So this is 2.9, okay? So basically, if I change that variable, if I do a transformation on it, this is my new outcome, okay? So there's your homework. I know some of that was a bit confusing, so feel free to rewind. Bring questions tomorrow. Try this, and then we'll work on this in class. All right. See you guys soon.